In this video, we'll be discussing about T cell activation. It's a process where naive T cells get activated into effector T cells or mature T cells. Or simply, we can say a naive T cell differentiation is driven upon activation that leads to different subsets of T cells. We see here we have two different naive T cells. One is the immature CD4 T helper cell, and other one is the immature CD8 POS2 cytotoxic T cell. Now let's see the interactions that drives the activation of T cell. The naive T cell interacts with the APC, that's antigen presenting cell, and gets activated into effector T cells. And we know we have two naive T cells. One is the CD8 POS2 and other being the CD4 POS2. We see the antigen presenting cells which expresses the MSC1 molecule on its surface, interacts with the CD8 POS2 T cell or cytotoxic T cell. And the antigen presenting cell which expresses MSC2 molecule on its surface, interacts with CD4 T helper cell. And the interaction of MSC molecule having peptide flagged in it with TCR of the T cell drives the T cell activation. Moving forward towards the T cell activation signals. We need two important signals for the activation of T cell. Plus we also need one signal that's accessory signal at the last. The first signal is when the TC or that's the T cell receptor of T cell interacts with the MSC molecule of APC. And here we will be discussing the activation of CD4 helper cell. So MSC2 with peptide interacts with the TCR of T cell. Then we have second signal in the form of co-stimulation by co-stimulatory molecules. Like we have CD28 of T cell interacting with CD80 or CD86 of APC. Both CD80 and CD86 are from B7 group of proteins. And it must be noted here, if this co-stimulatory signal is absent, the cells get into energy. So basically this co-stimulatory signal or we can say second signal saves the cell from getting into energy state. Then we have third signal which is the production of cytokines. Now let's see the T cell activation in detail through molecular interactions. First of all in this diagram we have the APC that's antigen presenting cell and it's having MSC in the membrane. The MSC2 molecule has got alpha and beta chains as shown in the diagram. The MSC2 presents the antigen in the form of peptide shown in the diagram. Now on the other hand we have T cell that's CD4 positive T helper cell. It's having TCR on membrane having alpha and beta chains. This TCR interacts with the MSC2 molecule and the peptide presented on MSC2 molecule as shown in the diagram. This interaction stimulates the T cell activation, what we call as first signal in this process. Then on the T cell, we have different kind of proteins. First of all, we have zeta protein chains. It exists in homodimer form. The zeta chains have three ITAMs on each chain. Then we have CD3 protein that exists in heterodimer form as CD3 epsilon and CD3 delta. Both these chains have only one ITAM on each chain. And on the right we can see another heterodimer of CD3 protein as CD3 epsilon and CD3 gamma. And we also have one transmembrane protein called the LAT protein LAT protein. It stands for linker for activation of T cells or simply linker of activated T cells. Then finally we have most important protein on T cell membrane which is the CD4 protein. It is this protein which gives the T cell the name as CD4 positive. Here in this diagram we can see the structure of CD4 protein with four subunits as D1, D2, D3, D4. This CD4 protein of T cell interacts with the beta chain of MSC2 molecule as shown in the diagram and helps in aiding the T cell activation through intracellular signaling which we are going to see later on in this video. Then we have second signal which is the co-stimulatory signal. It's mediated by the interaction of CD28 protein which is present on T cell and the B7 protein of antigen presenting cell. Now let's start the signaling pathways initiated by the different proteins of T cell in order to differentiate the naive T cells into effector T cells. To initiate the signaling we have the first signal which is the interaction of MSC molecule and TCR molecule and we also have CD4 protein interacting with MSC2 molecule. 
Both these interactions mediate the recruitment of LCK towards the cytoplasmic tail of CD4 protein as shown in the animation. So the LCK comes in and binds with the CD4 tail end of CD4 molecule or CD4 protein. The LCK is a tyrosine kinase protein. It phosphorylates the ITAM domains of zeta chains as shown in the diagram. And then these phosphorylated zeta chains recruit the ZAP70 protein towards the ITAM domains. Here we see in this animation ZAP70 comes in and binds with the ITAM domains of zeta chain. And in turn this ZAP70 is phosphorylated which makes it active. And this active ZAP70 protein then phosphorylates the LAT protein that's linker of activated T cells. Here in this diagram we can see the LAT protein is getting phosphorylated. The LAT protein then activates and recruits the SLP76 protein which binds the LAT through association of GRAP2 protein or GADS protein as shown in the diagram. And furthermore we see this SLP76 then binds TEC protein which ultimately drives many different pathways in association with LAT protein. We see PLC pathway is activated, the RAS pathway is activated and also MAPK pathway is activated. All these pathways are for the T cell proliferation and development. Whereas LAT protein also activates VAV protein which in turn drives the RAC pathway RAC pathway that mediates the T cell differentiation. We see in the nucleus PLC pathway, RAS pathway, VAV pathway and many different pathways converge and crosstalk with each other. That ultimately leads to the transcription of factors such as AP1, NF80 that leads to T cell differentiation. Also remember this SLP76 activated protein drives the allelic exclusion in T cells. Now you might be wondering what the co-stimulation signal does. That is the interaction of B7 molecule with CD28 of the T cell. We see the activated CD28 molecule mediates the recruitment of PI3K molecule which ultimately leads to NFKB pathway activation. And even CD28 activation leads to VAV mediated RAS pathway. So there are many different pathways that are getting activated through these stimulations. Another notable interaction is the OX40 receptor interaction with OX40 ligand of APC. The OX40 ligand of antigen presenting cell interacts with the OX40 receptor of activated T cell. This interaction occurs after many hours of activation. It's when the proliferation and activation of T cell slows down, this interaction comes into rescue. The OX40 interaction prevents the signal from dying off and subsequently increasing the cytokine production thus leading to more activation of T cells. So these are the major pathways and mechanisms by which the T cell activation is driven. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.